Good morning, everyone. Um, so I am starting now to do some weekly awareness videos, and I felt a calling to do um, some videos regarding the skin, um, which is something that um, my practice has kind of evolved over time, how I take care of my skin. And um, I've seen some really amazing results, and I just wanted to give you folks a little bit of a background on my own personal skin um, journey. And I think it's a pretty common story when it comes to um, the t typical acne riddled teenage um, nightmare, pretty much. So um, between the ages of like, I think it was f like 14 and 16, I was about a sophomore year in high school, I started to develop really bad acne to the point where I had like cystic acne. And um, this, you know, time of my life when I was like, you know, 14, 15 and had such bad acne was really, really detrimental to my own self-esteem and to um, just my social, social socialization in general. So I started to kind of desperately seek for, you know, solutions to my skin problems. I tried proactive, I tried, you know, all these, you know, over the counter situations typical of um, <clears throat> what I had available to me at the time. And I ended up taking Accutane. Now, it was kind of a desperate measure. Um, I was slightly versed in the uh, side effects of such a drug. One of the things I, I definitely distinctly remember is having to take birth control even though I was not sexually active at the time um, because of the pretty much guarantee that you would have birth defects um, with a child if you got pregnant on Accutane, which is kind of a big uh, warning bell, I feel like. Um, <clears throat> come to find out now, I've uh, studied a little bit of some of the long-term side effects of taking Accutane and um, basically what Accutane is, is um, synthetic doses, high, high doses of vitamin A, which constrict the pores and basically stop your skin from producing oils. So when you're on Accutane, your lips are chapped, your skin is peeling, um, your skin is just like really dry and um, some of the, the side effects when you're on the drug can be really bad too. I mean, depression, suicide, fatigue, muscle joints, muscle aches. I mean, serious stuff. So, um, but looking at the long-term effects, and the thing about it is, is when you take these drugs, a lot of times it takes a while for you to, um, for your body to manifest some of the symptoms. And a lot of times people don't associate the health problems that they have years down the road with these types of drugs. So, I mean, you can have IBS, um, you can even have depression years later, joint pain. Um, there's so many side effects to taking these types of drugs to fix, you know, skin problems, which there are so many reasons that teenagers especially have skin issues, um, dietary, hormone related, um, and when with allopathic medicine, like with pretty much any, you know, substrate of, of allopathic medicine, dermatology is no exception. It's, you know, this idea of attacking a symptom rather looking than looking at the root cause. And <clears throat> when you just isolate the symptom and attack that, you create so many other different problems in the body. And for example, when you're taking Accutane and those high doses of vitamin D, A, a lot of times that gets stored in your liver. And a lot of times the liver is what is causing the skin issues in the first place. So it's this like <laughs> kind of stupid system where you're damaging the very organ that's causing your skin to break out in the first place because your skin a lot of times is part of um, your overall detox. So, I totally do not agree with basic dermatology when it comes to taking care of the skin. It's really backwards. Um, and I'll kind of break that down a little bit for you as well. So, <clears throat> the most simple thing to start with when it comes to protecting your skin's microbiome is the type of water that you come in contact with. So, um, how do you how do you minimize the crappy water that your skin comes in contact with? Because 
face it, most of us use municip municipal water systems. Some of us are lucky enough to, to have a well. Um, but so what is in the water that is damaging in our skin? Well, most of us are aware of chlorine being in the sin as in the water as a disinfectant. Now, what chlorine is is basically an antibiotic. And believe it or not, your skin has its own microbiome. So it's basically the immune system, the bacteria, the good bacteria in your skin is your skin's immune system. And it's also tied into your whole body's immune system because our bodies are made up of more bacterial cells than our own DNA. Um, kind of crazy to think of, but most of them are good bacteria. Um, unless you've taken a lot of antibiotics because that's basically carpet bombing the whole system and creating a huge imbalance. So we don't want to have a lot of chlorine on our skin. And the thing about taking a hot shower and chlorine is you're completely opening up the pores and basically just sucking in all of that chlorine. And so basically taking a regular length shower in chlorinated water is like drinking an eight ounce glass of water, uh, of with chlorinated water. And that's not good because you're also killing the internal microbiome by showering in chlorinated water. So, um, and nowadays, you know, I, I feel like you used to be able to turn on the tap and actually smell the chlorine and that's kind of changed. And the reason is because the EPA has new standards as far as passing the water. And so what the water companies have done to pass these um, rigorous new tests is they've changed the structure of what they put in the water. So now they do something called chloramine. Chloramine is a combination of chlorine and ammonia. So what it initially does is it initially basically bombs all the bacteria in your water and passes these new standards. But ammonia eventually off gases, I forget the chemical that it off gases, but it actually feeds more bacteria, not the good kind. So not only is chloramine ineffective at actually disinfecting the water, it's creating more microbes that are not good. And ammonia is not good for you as well. And so now you have chloramine and ammonia to deal with, right? So how do we get rid of that? How do we mitigate our exposure to these toxins? Well, you can see behind me in my shower, I have a little filter. Um, this is called a seal stone and they're actually pretty inexpensive on Amazon. Um, based on the research I did last night, cause in preparation for this video, I decided to do as much research as I could so I could be educated in educating myself and teaching this. I'm learning a lot. So <clears throat> this is not as effective of a filter. It might filter out some impurities, but what you really want to get to, to, almost eliminate or mitigate as much as possible the chlorine and the chloramine is a vitamin C filter that'll totally neutralize the chemicals and then you won't have to worry about it. So that's one way to help yourself in the shower. Also, I never take a hot shower. Never. Um, during the summertime, I usually just take cold showers. Um, it feels really good. It's like my cup of coffee at 6 a.m. in the morning, um, get some of that cold water right on your face, it'll definitely wake you up. Um, during the winter time, I'm a little bit more, you know, like, oh, I don't wanna get in a cold shower, so to get myself in, I start with warm and then finish with cold. Um, and that definitely helps. And it's hydrotherapy, it's great for your nervous system, uh, great for your skin, it helps tighten your skin. There's a lot of benefits to taking cold showers. So <clears throat> that's a little bit of a tangent, but, um, so that's the shower part, right? Um, how do we mitigate when we wash our faces, our exposure? Because unless you put a whole filtration system in your home, um, which is really expensive, how do you mitigate when you wash your face? Now, first of all, when I wash my face, I'm gonna go through the whole steps at the end, how I actually wash my, wash my face, but I never splash water in my face. Um, I use, and I like to use hot water on my skin with a washcloth. And I only wash my face once a day at the end of the day, um, just to get all the, you know, grime from the day, any makeup that I'm wearing off. Men, I'm sure you don't have to worry about that too much. But, um, so I was using just the tap water as until like a week ago. Um, I was trying to figure out how I was going to do it without. And my mom actually came up with a solution and I think it's fabulous. 
and it's pretty inexpensive actually. So she purchased this right here. So this is, um, it's Aroma. It's a stainless steel water heater um, and it just plugs into the wall and it heats the water super fast, like 30 seconds. And I don't want it to completely boil because I'm not trying to singe my skin, but I kind of wait until I start seeing the steam rise. And then I have a little bowl in my bathroom and I just take a washcloth and put it, put a little washcloth right in the bowl. And then I take the hot water, pour it right in there. And then it's usually pretty hot, so I kind of just shake it out a little bit. And then I just use that right on my face. Um, and it works really, really well. So that's how I've kind of gotten rid of the issue of putting that nasty water right on my face. So um, the other part of people's usual skin routines is... Um, using soap. Now, soap, like normal soap that you'd buy in the store, bar soap, um, commercialized soaps, have soap surfactants in them. Now, soap surfactants actually don't, I mean, they get rid of bacteria and dirt and that sort of thing, but they also lodge into the epidermis of our skin and they stay there for days. And why that's a bad thing is because what it does is it completely disrupts your hydrolipid barrier. So this hydrolipid barrier actually helps your, um, the primary function of it is it to protect your skin and also for hydration. There's little things called ceramides in your skin and those are responsible for um, controlling moisture loss. Now, what, it all, what soap also does is it affects your acid mantle. The acid mantle is this thin film on the surface of your skin that also protects against um, bad bacteria, viruses, and contaminants. And um, so we want these barriers on our skin to protect us from, from outside um, invaders, the bad guys. Like we have so many good guys on the surface of our skin. We want to keep them. We don't want to damage them in any way. So we do obviously not want to just completely not use soap because you know we got some smelly parts here so um for women especially this is for you never use soap on your private parts just don't do it because you have a natural ph the vagina is a self-cleaning system um only use water ever period um but you do want to use soap you know kind of on your underarms maybe on the back side and, and maybe your fingernails and your feet, but that's it. And the type of soap that you use is also important. I've actually been looking into um, clay bar soaps because clays are a really good way to draw out impurities and bacteria without disrupting that microbiome. Um, I also use like, you know, we have Dr. Bronner's soap, which is like a natural Castile soap. So there are really good natural alternatives to commercial soaps that, so please, 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 please buy natural soaps. Do not buy crappy soaps and don't use soap on your entire body because you're really disrupting that microbiome that is so important for not just your skin's immune system, but for your whole body, your whole body. Now, once you've, you know, we've gotten through the cleansing thing, uh, another way that I take care of my skin is I dry brush. So we want to get rid of the dead skin that's kind of accumulated on the surface of the skin. And um, so I use a dry brush and I do this every morning. It's great for the circulation, great for the lymphatic system. Um, and you always want to um, scrub towards the heart for your lymphatic system. So I start usually at my feet and work kind of in circular motions up towards my heart and then on my arms. And then, you know, and then I also have a separate brush for my face. And this, you want to just go in upward motions on your face. Great exfoliator. And then once I, I'm done with exfoliation, um, I coat my entire body in oil before I shower. Um, because this is just another really good barrier to protect your skin from drying out because even just even if you have a shower filter and you're doing all that stuff you still you know want to keep all of the natural oils you want to keep your you know microbiome happy so um, I use a body butter either that I make um, and I'm going to do a separate video on that but um, I use a body either a body butter that I make out of coconut oil and cacao butter 
um, or I use like sesame oil or even like a really nice pure olive oil on my skin and then um, I'll let it sit for a couple minutes and then I'll just jump in the shower and the, sh the being in the shower with those oils actually kind of fuses the oils to my skin um, it might wash some of it away but it's very minimal so I step out of the shower and my skin is glowing and it feels soft and supple and it's completely moisturized and I'm ready to go. So it's really simple, you know, this concept of like we have to scrub ourselves clean all the time. Our, you know, our body is actually a self-cleaning system. So, you know, we just want to just support it in its natural functions. Um, so you kind of want to avoid um, commercial lotions because a lot of them can train, could contain petroleum um, and what petroleum does is basically act like a saran wrap on your skin and doesn't allow it to breathe um, same thing with wearing unnatural fiber clothing um, especially underwear never ever ever wear underwear men and women never wear a polyester underwear because for women it'll definitely disrupt the pH of your um, vagina and for men it's a spermicidal so um, anything that's gonna mess up your you know your those types of bodily functions is no good um, so definitely you know wear cotton breathable stuff um, try to stay away from um, unnatural fibers anywhere on your body but especially down there so um, Let's see what else do I want to talk about skin issues um, a lot of times stem from a microbial imbalance and not just on your skin kind of a lot of times it's a systemic problem so you know if you're having gut bacteria issues um, but sometimes it can be resolved just by rebalancing your external microbiome I'm not going to go into that's a rabbit hole that could go on forever about um, your entire body's microbiome, including your mouth and, and all that stuff. So um, one of the best oils that you can use on your face to clean your face is jojoba oil. So jojoba oil is uh, basically a liquid wax that cannot go rancid. And what's great about jojoba oil is it actually it has sebum that is identical to your skin's own sebum. And so when you use jojoba oil on your skin, it actually helps lift out the oxidized sebum and um, really helps cleanse the skin in a very gentle way. And it's really, really good for acne. So um, I use, and be careful too, because um, there are some jojoba oils that are better than others. Um, I use this one. Um, it's from the jojoba company and it's totally like really really good this is a really good product um, I've tried a lot of different jojoba oils and um, there's some purity tests that you can do but I just get this one it's great I'm not making any money off of that I'm not trying to like you know push a product but this is really good so my skin routine is super simple it's inexpensive this bottle cost me like $25 which it might seem like a lot, but this will last me a couple months. So really, it's very, very inexpensive. So the only thing I do to take my makeup off and wash my face at the end of the day, and guys, you could do this too, um, just as just to help your skin look glowy and nice and clear, um, as I take a couple squirts of this. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate exactly how I clean my face, which means i got to get my hair out of the way. So... I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn this water heater on here get some get some hot water going and all right so I put a couple squirts of the jojoba oil in my palm and then I just rub it on my face you know you can do it for as long as you want but it's nice to kind of like really massage it into the skin if I, I'm not wearing any makeup right now but if I was I'd be kind of getting the my mascara off scrubbing it really like loosening up the the wax of the mascara so I've got my handy dandy water heater here you can, might be able to hear it kind of in the background it's gonna take a second for it to heat up I've already got my washcloth ready to go in my bowl here so I'm not gonna wait for it to get super hot because we don't really I don't need to worry about it. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of, oops. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water in here. 
And um, so basically what I do is I just take this washcloth, wring out the water, and I just lay it over my face. And then just kind of like steam the oil into my skin. And you could even like scrub your skin a little bit. This is where I really like wipe off the makeup. Now, I like to do that at least three times. So I keep, I just repeat the process at least three times. If I'm wearing makeup, I'm, I might do it maybe three or four times. And then that's it, makeup's off. Now, you might even wanna do that again with the oil if you had a lot of makeup on. But um, what my next step is um, really helps get any sort of residual like makeup off of my face because girls, you don't want to go to bed with any makeup on your face at all. So I have this little spray bottle and actually I'm hoping to switch this to a small glass bottle because I have straight apple cider vinegar in this bottle. Now it's probably dissolving the plastic. 90 99% sure it's dissolving the plastic into the apple cider vinegar, which is not good because plastic, even on the surface of the skin, is a hormone disruptor. So this is a no-no. Um, I'm going to change that, but for right now it's convenient. I did this for a travel type thing. So I take a little cotton pad here. I spray this like five or six times, and then I just take the apple cider vinegar, and I just wipe my face like this. Now this is a great toner, tightener for the skin, and guess what? Apple cider vinegar is great for your microbiome. It actually helps feed that bacteria because it's a fermented, it's fermented. It has its own bacterial qualities to it. So usually at this stage, if I had makeup on, there would be like a bunch of residual makeup on here. Ooh, my face is a little bit dirty. So avoid your eyes though, because apple cider vinegar is pretty strong stuff and I definitely sometimes make my eyes burn a little bit. And that's it. Like, if I want to, I sometimes I'll add a little bit. If I'm feeling a little dried out, I'll add a couple more drops of oil and leave it on my face. I like to use um, this sea boot oil, which is a sea berry seed oil. It's got, like, sea buckthorn and, and um, some other really good restorative oils for the skin. Um, but this is your personal preference. I used to use rosehip oil, which is also really good for your skin. So I'll just put, like, a couple of drops on, you know, a few areas of my face and just rub it in, and that's it. Or... One of my standard essential oils that I think everyone should have because it's one of those essential oils that works for a lot of different things and that's lavender essential oil. Lavender essential oil is great for acne and for any sort of like scrapes or anything. It, it helps um, neutralize the bad bacteria and helps the healing process too. And so I use a lot of lavender oil on my face and you can just use it directly on your face, which is awesome. Um, and it's so nice and it helps kind of calm you too. There's so many really, really good things. And in fact, I was going to talk a little bit more about essential oils. I think I'm just going to give a little bit more of a broad overview. I think it's going to be a completely separate video about, um, all the benefits that essential oils can, um, give to your skin. Now there are a few other steps that you can take. Um, one of the things that I used to do a lot is do honey scrubs. So here in this jar I have some honey that is crystallized. This is an awesome face scrub. So if you really like, I wouldn't do this very often because you don't want to just like, you know, scrub the shit out of your face all the time. Excuse my language. Um, but this, it, it's really nice and um, Honey also has natural bacteria that is really, really good for your skin and, and helps your skin's microbiome as well. So I used to actually cleanse my face with honey, which is really nice because honey is one of those things that promotes good bacteria, but like also neutralizes bad bacteria. So another one of those things, and, and you can just like wash that off with a little bit of warm water. Um, I, now I've, I've kind of graduated from using honey and I only use oils on my skin. Um, so I don't really, I, I've had this sitting in my cupboard for a really long time. Now, a, a couple other steps that I like to do, um, just to further make sure that my skin is, is, um, clean is I actually use castor oil on my lash line. Now, girls, if you want to really promote healthy eyelashes, um, this has been 
kind of a game changer for me because I was noticing that as I was getting older, my eyelashes weren't as thick and they were kind of falling out. Um, so I take a Q-tip and I dip it into my castor oil and I put a little bit on my eyebrows and then I just rub this along my lash line. Now I saved my Q-tip from last night. I was going to see if I can show you guys this. This is after I'd washed my face really thoroughly. So if you can look at this Q-tip, see the tip of it, how it's like kind of like got some gunk in there. So this is the leftover of my, of my mascara that I thought I had washed out and obviously hadn't. So castor oil actually not only really good at moisturizing that lash line, but it also will get rid of any leftover impurities that are clogging up those pores and causing those hairs not to grow. So since I started doing castor oil every night, I've definitely seen a noticeable improvement in um, the quality of my lashes and, and the thickness of my lashes. Unfortunately, I have blonde eyelashes, so it doesn't really matter because you can't see them anyways. But I know because when I put mascara on, it looks way better. So, um, I, oh, yeah, I was going to talk about essential oils. So, I'm just going to give kind of a, an overview of why essential oils are so good for the skin. Um, something I learned last night, which was really cool, is that um, things like bacteria, pathogens, viruses, they have something called quorum sensing. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I'm only going to be able to explain this in my own layman terms. But um, quorum, quorum sensing is basically these pathogenic organisms, their um, ability to communicate with each other. And basically when they start communicating with each other, they form like colonies and then that's how they start to kind of grow and grow and grow and grow exponentially. So what essential oils can do is they basically disrupt and inhibit this ability of... Um, these pathogenic organisms to communicate with each other. They they it, um, they inhibit quorum sensing. So what's cool about that is um, essential oils are basically like antibiotics, but they only target bad bacteria. They work synergistically with your good bacteria, which is what you want. <laughs> you don't want to carpet bomb all your bacteria because you kind of need the good guys to help, you know, fight on your side. So that's why essential oils are so awesome because they really don't have a lot of negative side effects and they're so good to put on your skin, to just inhale. Um, and yeah, so I, I, there's, there, I have a whole list of, of essential oils that are really, really good for your skin. Like I said, lavender is the one that I use the most right now. But um, um, you can use, I have, look, so I have like 10, no, maybe like seven written down because I'm all about collagen production right now. In my life, I'm hitting my 30s. I want to keep my collagen pr production up. So things like calendula, um, geranium, lemon oil, carrot seed oil, all of these things help produce collagen. They also get rid of viruses, bad bacteria, and promote good bacteria. So um, I'm actually going to do another video on essential oils and then I'm going to do part two of this because I want to talk about, so we talked about soap, we talked about um, water, we talked about um, some of the basic skin oils. So um, my next video I am going to cover um, sun, the sun, like sun damage and um, actually why sunscreen is terrible for you and why it actually causes skin cancer, um, why vitamin D and vitamin K2 deficiency is so prevalent in our society, what actually causes age spots and it's not the sun. Um, well, it kind of is the sun, but it's a combination of a couple things. And then I also um, want to cover a little bit more on the essential oils and I'm also going to do maybe a separate video, but maybe it's going to be a combination in how to make your own deodorant. Um, also how to make your own body butter and how to make your own sunscreen for the times when you're in the most intense sun and you want to use something natural. So, um, I'm sure this video was pretty long for you guys, but, um, I think this topic is super duper important. It's definitely been very, very important to me because of all of the t horrible skin problems that I had as a kid. And then, um, just moving on into my adult life, I had... Even after taking Accutane, I still had, you know, breakouts and that sort of thing, and I'll still get a pimple here and there. But my skin, since I have started um, 
this type of natural regimen has really, really drastically improved. And I'm not scared of the sun. I'm not scared of wrinkles. I love to go out and sunbathe and have golden skin and I don't feel guilty about it because I know how to properly take care of my skin so that as I age, um, I can actually boost my collagen. I can actually reduce wrinkles. And ladies, I'm gonna have a tip um, probably in video three. This is video one. Next week I'm gonna cover that. And then video three I'm gonna cover some of the internal things that you can do to boost collagen, um, improve, improve the elasticity of your skin and some of the things that I'm implementing to do that. Um, and I'll give you a hint. Some of it has to do with hormones. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're just tuning in, go back to the beginning. I please, please, please encourage you because there's some really important tips on um, how to eliminate toxins from the water that you're putting on your body and also um, how and what types of soaps to use and not to use and also the type of skin types of skin oils that are best for your face and for your body. All right. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, give me some likes, give me some love, help the Facebook algorithm to put me at the top so other people can um, get some of this information. I hope you guys have a beautiful